In this episode, can we finally push back against the cruel Antigonids in the north whilst also trying to defend our lands against a glorious and large Thracian invasion? Well, stay tuned to find out. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are back with another Epirus campaign video in RTR Imperium Serectum. And it has been brutal, hasn't it, my friends? The race to Pella last episode was crazy, and we had to deal with so many more full stacks of the goddamn Antigonids. It has been a brutal and very challenging campaign, which has been really fun. And, of course, I've been a little bit salty at times, so today we're, we are having a... Uh, you know, a new love episode, a love episode, a happy episode, you know, a 60s episode, the summer of love, all that sort of thing. You know, phalangites facing the wrong way. I'm just going to say, you know, you do you guys. Enjoy yourselves, you know, thrusting your poles into thin air. You can enjoy that. That sounds enjoyable to some people. You know, just just do yourself, man. Just just be happy. Just be happy. That's how I'm going to be today, okay, guys? Because <laughs> I've been a little bit salty in the last few episodes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just mainly stress, I think, that's the saltiness, to be honest. But uh, let's have a look around. We are going to toggle Fog of War. So let's toggle the Fog of War. We haven't uh, had a look at the Fog of War at all since we started. Uh, but we like to do it every 10 episodes, so for, like for on the 10th episode and then every 5 episodes from then on. So let's have a look around. And the Antigonids, you can see, are not going to be that hard to clean up. They don't have that many settlements left at the minute. Not that many, still quite a lot, but not a huge amount. But they probably will still be able to pull together two more full stacks before we get going. In the north, the Pionians have expanded so far. And if we have a look, the score Disky. Look at these boys. They've expanded a lot. And we do not want Celtic invasions into our lands, guys, do we? Not at all. So, I mean, here is really where I'd like to stop and potentially fort wall this whole north. Just so that we can stop anyone coming into our lands. Um, I think that's the best option. And just have some sort of response force here to deal with any incursions from barbarians. But, yeah, I, I mean, our main thing is dealing with the Antigonids and then potentially going after Pionia too. But I really don't want to go all the way up to there. That is just open land, free conquest for anyone else. And could bring us into war with Tribali, with the Thracians themselves, and the Scordisci, which are probably not things that we can win right now. Especially against, you know, those troops with the troops we have. Because we don't really have any good troops. I mean, the Ambrachiotes are fine. But they're pretty mid-tier phalangites. But let's have a look down south. Oh my god. <laughs> oh what my god. This is just absolute carnage down here. Absolute carnage. Utter carnage. Athens just loves just putting troops randomly everywhere. Like, what are you doing, Athens? Consolidate your lands, man. They've got they've got Thebes now, Athens, as well. What are they doing? Silly Athens. The Boeotians are pretty much dead. It looks like the Antigonids, you know, took land off them. So they're, still, they're neutral to us now. I have no idea how or why that happened because I swore that they were our ally. <laughs> the Aetolians doing okay. The Achaeans have been pretty pushed back by Ellis, which is of all people. Sparta seems... Pretty darn stable, to be honest. Not really doing too much. But the Antigonids have another couple of massive full stacks down here, too. Crete, let's have a look. Pretty much battle royale as usual. Now, let's go across to Anatolia, because there's some interesting things here. The Chrysaurian League. Look at that. Chrysaurian League is out and going. Rhodes is across attacking the Ptolemies, it looks like. Very nice indeed. Well done, Rhodes. Good job there. Chios! What the hell? Chios has taken Ephesus and Teos. What boys? Go on the Chios boys. Nice to see. Miletus exists and so does Priene. So the Seleucids and the Ptolemies really are not having a good time in Anatolia, it seems. I mean, the Seleucids still have a vast swathe of land. Pergamon seems to be doing... What is, what is it with you, Athens? Like, what is this? I know you've got a bit of land there. 
But why? <laughs> what are you doing, man? Um, but yeah, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies really struggling, it seems. The Galatians are nearly dead because of Heraclea Pontica. What in the fuck is going on? <laughs> this, is, this is absolute carnage. Pontus is doing pretty darn well. Like, they're a pretty big empire at this point. Why is it showing red for the Greek city-state? I thought we were allied with them. What has happened to all our alliances? Why are we not allied with anyone anymore? I could have sworn we got an alliance with the Greek city-states. Again, no allies. Why? What's happened? I guess Paeonia caused them to break their alliance with us. Uh, but yeah, Pontus is doing pretty well. Cappadocia is staying strong in the center. Um, but Heraclea Pontica getting seized down by Byzantium. The Bithynians are pretty much reduced to nothing. And Byzantium is going absolutely ham. What absolute legends. They're getting attacked by the Adrissians, but what absolute beasts. What boys. I love that. I love seeing that. Nice one by Byzantium. Uh, and then round here is just carnage. Thracian lands is just an absolute battle royale, as you can see. There's bits of each territory, you know. Tribali seem to be doing very well, in fact. The Idrisians struggling, but still okay. And Tylus and Kabile just existing. Astia still does exist as well, but... Oh my god. Heraclea Pontica. Heraclea Pontica has gone mental. And I always thought these, this faction would be very good. Because they start with a lot of troops in a lot of uh sorry not a lot of troops they start with a lot of cities and large towns all with ports so they're very rich right from the start so yeah i thought they would do well but fair play they're going absolutely ham and kind of blocked in the Gete. if we remember from the seleucid campaign the Gete were one of the predominant powers and this time they are only two of the two settlements over across to crimea and yeah chersonesos is doing well and the Bosporans are doing all right too. I mean, they've taken some land off the Sirachis, but I don't think... I mean, if they take the last of the Sirachi settlements, they hoard. So that's a bit of a scary proposition for us all, if that happens. Over in the east, Parthia is doing okay. For some reason, the Sarka have this territory here. Not connected to anything else, so... Fair enough. I don't know why, but go and take it if you want. Bactria seems to be doing okay. They're not really doing much. Looks like Parthia and the Seleucids are at war as well. So Bactria is just kind of chilling. I mean, they can do because they're so protected and have so many uh, mines and such rich settlements that it's fine. They really don't need to do anything. Well, hello, uh, India. <laughs> You might want to use those troops, my friends. Like, honestly, what are they doing, man? Come on, AI. Like, you could literally... If you just got all of those armies into Bactria, you could clean up Bactria in four or five turns. Like, that would not be an, a problem at all. You wouldn't even need to play the battles if this was a player. you just auto-resolve every one if you had that many armies. But I guess India is just not bothered. They're just chilling. Um, doesn't look like there's much going on down the border, though, as well with the Seleucids. Doesn't really look like they're fighting over the desert, which is probably a better idea because these lands are not very rich and there's not much out here. Down here in the south, the Saba are just doing Saba things, just taking the rebel territory. Kush, too, looks like they've just taken rebel territory and haven't fought the Ptolemies just yet. But over here in the north, yes... The Nabataeans, they have taken a settlement off the Ptolemies. What absolute boys. I love to see that. Really good. Um, <laughs> Come on, Ptolemies and Seleucids. Like, you just need to fight, man. You need to fight. Why is this happening? Like, the Ptolemies, like, those are so many armies. You need to fight. Is there, like, a, a similar thing in Mesopotamia for the Seleucids? Not really. It looks like the Seleucids are actually using their troops. <laughs> the Ptolemies are just hanging around doing nothing. <laughs> Great. Come on, Ptolemies. Go and, go and fight, man. Like, what are you doing? They've even got a full stack on Cyprus, which there's just no need for that at all. While, while they're just losing land in Anatolia. At least attack the, the Seleucids, man. Let's have a look 
across towards Issa and all that sort of thing. Issa looks like they're doing all right, actually. Expanded a little bit. The RDAI have not really done anything. Just a little bit. Scordisky doing well. Let's have a look at Rome. <laughs> oh, baby. That is glorious to see. Oh, my God. That is fantastic to see. That is amazing. Come on, the boys. The, uh, the Syracusans absolutely going ham on the Romans. That's what we love to see. Unless you're a Roma boo, of course, which I know there's a lot of you out there. But for me, that is very pleasurable. <laughs> Come on, Syracuse. Smash the Romans to pieces. And then we might be invading Syracuse rather than Rome at some point. Um, yeah, come on, AI. Do something. Do something, man. <laughs> Do something. Don't just stand your armies around Ancon. You don't need five legions to take Ancon, my friend. But let's have a look up in the north. Um, we don't really need to cover the Celts and Germans too much because they're just blobbing. Like, they're all just blobbing in their own areas. Not really fighting each other too much, it seems. Same thing over here. But the boy eye, though. The boy eye are nearly, like, connected their land. They are three settlements away from connecting their land completely. Fair play. That is a pretty MVP moment, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that is pretty nice. All the Germans just, you know, chilling, taking rebel territory. Same as the Kimbri. Same as the Trinovantes. But the boy eye, fair play. What boys? I love to see that. And they're not even at war with Rome. So they're just chilling. Carthage over here. Still got their part in Sicily. But Carthage, honestly, looking at the minimap, it looks like they've done a much better job of consolidating the Numidians. Because normally it takes them forever. Like, they hadn't even done it in my Seleucid campaign after, what, like 200 turns or something? Like, in this, they look like they have done a good job. So, fair play, Carthage. I hope you do manage to consolidate them. Carthage, honestly, at this point, with the struggles that the Ptolemies are facing, look maybe like they're the strongest nation. And Rome, of course. Um, the struggles Rome's facing. Seleucids are still relatively strong, but very unstable probably still. And they seem to be losing hold of their grip on Anatolia. So I would say Carthage is probably the best nation out there at the minute. So uh, interesting, interesting. But I think we'll end that there. I don't think we need to look at anything else. But yeah, glorious, glorious battle map, uh, campaign map, should we say. So I think we are where we are right now. I don't think there's anything else we need to do. So let's end the turn and let's see what happens, my friends. And Pionia is attacking us. That's good, though. That's really good. So that should hopefully, you know, bring them to attack us in the settlement. What army is it, though? Yeah, it's a pretty good one. It's, it looks mainly like missile troops, though. Not really much infantry in there, it seems, but I guess we'll find out. Do these guys with the gold... Yeah, Missile Attack 8, so they do get the gold upgrade. It's just not showing when you look at it. But glorious, 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 glorious. I love to see that because if we can defend the siege... I mean, even if we lose, we should pretty much take all of their army out. So, yeah, I'd much rather take a defensive siege and a field battle against the Thracians, especially when... You know, their army, that most of their army is armor-piercing somewhere, so... <laughs> oh, glorious. Well, we have retrained in Ambrachia, it would seem. So, let's come out of there. We've also got this guy in here, so I'm going to get him in. And we're going to lose one of the Deuteroi, because they are trash. Like we've seen many times before, this guy can come up around this way probably you can go back into ambrachia where do we send this army though i think potentially up to deal with the thracians for now i think that's the best option for us the antigonids did decide to siege down this that's fine who's rioting corkira god damn corkira why would you damage all of that as well god damn it you fools and you're happy now why do you keep getting really upset Fenike has now grown, but we can't afford it now because of goddamn Korkira. Fine. We will uh, upgrade that. That's good to see, though, with uh, Fenike. I would like to see that get a little bit better. We're also going to join these Thurioforoi into there. And who else have we got trained now? You guys need to get in Larissa, don't you? So 
Let's retrain them. That's going to cost us all of the rest of our money, unfortunately. But we've also got this battle to do. So let's get across here and let's do that battle. I think we've got enough to beat it. Shouldn't be too difficult. But yeah. And then, yeah, our second army is in Pella, ready to receive the siege and defend it for all it's worth, which will be glorious. So let's do this battle and let's see whether we can beat this. A small battle against the Chalcospedes, but again, it shouldn't be too difficult. Should be fine. The only thing we need to worry about is morale, but hopefully we'll have enough to win the day. So our plan here is just to engage them across a very wide front and then use our missile guys to try to engage them uh, in the back and just shoot them to death. That is our main plan right now. We're also going to try and use our Prodromoid 2 and our archers to engage them around the flanks and shoot them to death. Like I say, the main issue here is going to be morale. Um, I don't think we're going to have much morale. So we want to just kind of run through there. And you guys can stay there and fire your missiles if you would, please. Halt. Just fire your missiles, boys. Problem here is, is our infantry. If they fail and run away, we're going to be screwed. So these guys need to get up here ASAP. Archers need to get there. We're also going to get the Prodromoy in here to fire into the back of them. So come on, Akontistai. We might not be able to do this. We might just have to skirmish it. You can see this unit is taking absolute battering here. Guys, what are you doing? Just fucking fire your missiles, for God's sake. Oh, I said I was going to be happy. <laughs> um, right. Let's get two of you over this way here. Let's get you guys in there. You guys in there too. You should be able to fire into the back of them. Oh, they've already got routing these guys. That's fantastic. That's what we love to see. Oh, God damn it. Are you going to fucking fire? You do you, guys. You do you, Thur Thurio 4 I Just be happy that you're alive, my friends. Happy that you're alive. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Dearie, dearie me, huh? Fire. Fire. You guys fire. You guys fire. Where are the archers? We need to get them around this way. You guys go and deal with them. I don't know why they're focusing on my poor Akontistai, but it's very annoying. Again, these guys are routing. Great. So let's get here. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this, man? You should not be in the attack, man. What is going on here? They just love fighting the Akontistai, apparently. Now we can fire at them. They're going to start running again. Well, as long as we can do a lot of damage to them, that's all that matters. Run, you fools. Run. Run, 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 run. Run. Now you should be able to fire. Just fire at them. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna, what, whether we're going to win this, but probably not, judging by it. Get the archers around. You guys get it back. Get back. Get back, you bastard. I'll break your legs. Get over there. Now you guys can fire at them. What are you doing? Oh, you're on actually run away situation thing. So let's get there. You guys just... Oh, you're broken now. You fools. You're going to get loads of friendly fire. At least it'll stop this unit for a little bit. Now fire. Let's come this way. Okay, we're going to surround them now. That's good. You guys get firing. Point blank range this time. Guys, come on. Okay, javelins in the back. That's actually quite good. That's actually quite good for us. So get there. You guys keep firing. You guys have actually run out of your ammo now. So I guess we're not going to beat this army. I'm not going to lie. Thurio Foroi managed to do a nice charge in there. I like that. Guys, fire there. Did, what? What? What are you doing? Fire. <laughs> fire. You do you guys. You do you. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not bothered by that at all. Keep firing. Keep firing. There we go. Chalk Speed has a pretty darn damage now. Uh, this unit. Okay, we'll get you right in behind. We'll also get you there as well. Hopefully able to fire into the back of them. Yeah, these guys are not going to die, are they? That's the, that's the main issue. There we go. Hope you are firing. Why have you reformed like this? 
That's really dumb. Ideally, your best angle's here. How did that even happen? Like, how did you reform like that? If we can kill the general, though, I think we should be okay. But I guess we'll find out. They're not in phalanx formation. That's our main sort of bonus right now. I feel like we can, like, kill most of them here. Oh, that's just... That's just routed our own men. <laughs> Come on, guys. Fire your javis. Fire your javis. They're still steady, apparently. Now they're shaken. Now they're wavering. Keep firing. Keep firing. Keep firing. Still shaken. Problem with the prodromy, tr prodromoy is... They, uh, why do you need to run to do this? Just fire. Come on. It's right in the side there. It's so obvious. Keep on firing, guys. Keep on firing. Why are you struggling to fire? Let's try and bait them away with one of these units. And you guys around this side too. Because ideally we want to attack them in one side. There we go. Now they can fire. That's good. Only 24 of them left. So it shouldn't be too long before that general dies. You guys get in the fight there too. They've got a lot of javis left, these boys. So that should be quite nice for them. They're wavering already though. Keep firing. Keep firing, my friends. Keep firing. I feel like if we surround this unit, we'll be okay. But maybe not. Maybe not. Right, fire at that Chalka Speeder still. God, these Chalka Speeders are so tough on very hard. They are brutally strong. Right, this unit needs to get around over, over here. Just get away from them slightly. Like, maybe listen? Maybe listen? Oh, just do you guys. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's really fine. It's absolutely fine. No problem. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. All right, get away, Prodromoy. Get away. Right, keep firing. Ideally, we want the archers here now to just fire at them like that. Uh, you guys can come up here. Now, these Akontistai are not going to really... Oh, my God. They just broke. They just broke, man. Steady now. They're steady. Rally the men. Come on. Rally the men. There we go. There we go. We've broken them. Now, kill them all. Kill them all. Right, Akontistai here. Now you guys can fire those boys. Fire at those boys. Nice. That's what we like to say. Say? That's what we like to see. So let's come over this way. And hopefully we can actually fire at this Chalka Speeders in the back. If they want to engage my Akontistai in the front rather than the Thurio Foroi, that's actually fantastic. Give them a volley. Give them a volley for the boys. They, these guys probably won't really be dying due to the shots. But it'll definitely be hurting them, so that's good. There we go. Give him a volley for the boys. What? How did you rout, man? Come on. Don't be a dickhead, man. Our guys are steady-ish. We come around here. Get firing. Oh, now the missiles should work. This isn't like a really long and brutal battle just for however long it is. They're shaken. Let's go for the charge then. Rally the men. There we go. Hopefully this will break them. Yes. Glorious. Glorious. Get out. Now you need to be firing at them. Now you need to be firing at them. You two can deal with this. And we've got this guy here too. The 304 right? At the minute, they are just, you know... Just get out. We don't want the Akontistai just routing and ruining this for us. So keep around here. Keep firing. And we've nearly used all our ammo here on this Chalka Speeders and hardly done any damage, lol. <laughs> nice. Fire at them, guys. Fire at them. Why are you greyed out? You still exist? Oh, the general has died, I guess. Keep firing your jabbies. If we can... I mean, if we can hold them... Like, why are you guys all stood all the way back there, man? Get in, into the fight, for God's sake. Keep firing... This is it just surrounding them and seeing if we can break them, I think? If we can get the Prodromoy in here too, that might help quite a bit. Looks like they're not in Phalanx formation anymore. So if we can get a nice little charge off, that might be us done. Right. There we go. They're wavering, so let's go for a charge. Let's see whether that'll break them. There we go. 
Oh, a tough one. A tough one, but a victory in the end. I would say a one-to-one -one kill ratio when we're fighting those third level of phalangites is pretty darn good. So I am very happy with that glorious victory, guys. I will see you back on the campaign map. Oh, and we got a man of the hour. Fantastic. I love to see that. He is blooded as well. Smart, uncharismatic though. So less troop morale and command. Uh, well, I mean, let's accept him. He deserves it. A key loss over here. He's only got one management. He's also spiritless. Oh, great. Uh, but yeah, fine. We got a general in our support army. That should just help with movement points really is the main thing. Do we go and try get Heraclea thingy thing? Heraclea thingy thing? Yes, that is that is my uh, <laughs> scientific name for that region. Problem is, if they come and attack us with this army, it's going to be a similarly brutal, brutal battle. We do have some reinforcements coming, though. So I think we just go for it. Like, screw uh, the Antigonids. Although, I would prefer to take a settlement... That is not bordering the Pionians. Because then the Pionians have another route for expansion. Currently they just have one route. But now they've got, you know, two if we go take that. So, do we just go straight for Lycnidos? It's only got one unit in there. I think we do. And just don't worry about these garrisons too much. Could also get some mercenaries. That would be another option. Which I think we will do. Celtic Cavalry. Gay Setai. Okay, Naked Warriors. These guys, 21 morale, 16 attack. Pretty darn good. Belovatian Infantry 2. Nice. Celtic Swordsmen, always good. Illyrians, not so good. Spear Warband. Sword Warband. Yeah, I think, you know, we can get a few decent Celtic units in this army and it'll be absolutely fine. So, Glorious. Probably better than our our guys to be honest <laughs> but i think we are done there so let's end the turn let's see where else is the goddamn antigonids going to attack us from so they came and sieged us down again with captain python <laughs> i don't really want to go back and attack them let's uh let's just draw do this draw out battle just to see what they have Okay, is this a Foray, a Uzonoi, and a Chalga Speeder? So it's actually going to be a little bit of an easier battle to fight. Especially if we get some good infantry like the Celtic Swordsmen. And potentially the Celtic Cavalry here. Not amazing cavalry, but not awful either. And maybe a Sword War Band too. What is this cavalry by? Illyrian Light Cavalry. It's pretty much just a Javi and Runaway Cavalry. Similar in stats to the Prodromoi, to be honest. So, yeah, probably not that useful. But those two Celtic units definitely will be. So we will do that battle then. And then hopefully come back and siege down Lycnidos. Now, we need to try and get another alliance with the GCS. I don't know why we haven't got an alliance with them. But we need to get one from them as well. Who have we? Yeah, we've just managed to get all those troops in Larissa retrained. Fantastic. Mainly Prodromoi. <laughs> um, but what do we do with Alexander now? Now, I don't want to fight both of those armies at the same time. So I'm going to stand on the bridge. And do they have any siege equipment? They do now. So I'm thinking that they are going to siege down Pella now. We could stand here. That might cause them to break off the siege and attack us both at the same time. I would rather both of those armies attack the siege by themselves than stop the siege and attack us. Because like they're going to be able to bring both of their armies into the fight. Whereas if we want to do that, we'll have to bring the AI in and they're going to do awful. So I really don't want to worry about that too much. We had a lot of towns grow. Fair Eye as well. Farsalos 2 and Oricon. Oh, fantastic. Well, we need money for that. And unfortunately, we don't have much money right now. So, <laughs> right then. Uh, yeah, we just can't... I, I'm not going to spend any more money on recruitment for now. We've done a good job of recruiting some decent armies. So, let's go back and attack this army. 
This should not be a problem, guys. I'll probably edit this quite a bit down, but let's see. We're going to mainly use our Celtic, our new Celtic units, because they have very high upkeeps being mercenaries. So, although we spent a lot of money on them, it is good to try and get rid of them ASAP after you've used those boys. Let's get them to Warcry 2. So, I want them to fire their Javis first, though. Ideally at the... Uh, Ideally at the Chalka Speedes, so let's keep coming. And we'll then get them to war cry and go for a crazy charge around the back. The rest of the missile troops, let's bring them around the right-hand side. And we'll also bring our cavalry around this way too to protect them. So there we go. They're going to attack us. Come on, guys. Fire your javis. Fire your javis. You two, you two as well, guys. Fire your javis. War cry as well. War cry. Oh, we can't war cry now. What? These guys are routing. What useless mercenaries, man. What fucking useless mercenaries. Oh, my God. Now all the Akontistai are going to get absolutely hammered. Are you fucking kidding me, man? What the hell? <laughs> they literally routed on one throw of the javelins. I know they're not the greatest of units. But that is awful. Right, guys. Get in the fight here. Oh my god. What what chaos? What a disaster. Are right, you guys fire then? We'll get the Chalka Speeders get in here. Make sure you war cry. War cry. They won't war cry. Why not? Apparently cuz they're already in the fight. So let's get in the back of the Chalka Speeders. What chaos. Oh my god. How have we lost this if we do lose it? Luckily we've got this unit to deal with. The Chalka Speedes, because they are quite a good unit. The Mercery Celtic Swordsman. There we go. Into the Uzonoi as well. What a disaster. What an unmitigated disaster, guys. <laughs> I really didn't expect that the Mercenary guy to just completely collapse. <laughs> like, they literally just ran after a couple of javelins were fired into them. But let's speed this up. Well, that was fucking horrible. <laughs> oh, no, it... It was good, man. It's all good. We're all happy. We we lost a few guys, but they're in they're in Olympus now. Well, well, no, they're not. They're in the underworld with Hades. But <laughs> Hades is known for being a lovely man. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure they're having a good time. Yes, L great victory loss. Yes. Well, what an unmitigated disaster. This guy surely has got some bad traits from that now. Blooded, he's also rationing, winter, and an un unlucky leader. I mean, that was insanely unlucky. You can honestly fuck off. Like, you caused all of that. Just routing with it without even hardly touching the enemy. Wait, this unit... How does this work, then? Surely they're going to take it. How does that even work? Have I got anyone to send in there? Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> fine, I guess. I don't know how that works, but <laughs> okay, that's fine. GCS is just chilling, but we need to get an alliance with them again. Like, I don't know why that alliance was... Oh, it's because they re-allied the goddamn Antigonids, like... Look how many alliances they have. We have none. Like, we like we cannot do anything um, except all we will attack. No. We see no benefit to us. Uh, I could give you 120 for compensation. There we go. Us. And then, is the alliance good now? Probably not. We see no, no. benefit to us. Will anyone be my ally, <laughs> please? How is it all demanding? Like, look at our strength comparison. Look at our re reputation. Look at our relationship. How can that be demanding? We are not at war with any of them. Like, any of their enemies. We are not allied with their enemies. We are not at war with, like, anyone that's friends with them. They have no alliances. That should be a, no a, a complete <laughs> slam dunk alliance. Like, what the fuck, man? Very demanding with Athens as well. God damn it, man. There's, like, literally, how? How? How is this very demanding? Fuck off. See no, benefit no, 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 no. Sorry. I can understand the AI's point of view on this, you know. Maybe they just don't want any allies, you know? Maybe they just don't want any allies. Um, I don't know. I don't know. 
maybe they just don't want it. It's it's fine. You know, it, it's I'm I'm happy about the situation. I'm not bothered at all. They're not bothered, you know. Clearly, it's the AI. They don't care. So everything's good, man. Everything's good. Right, let's press the end turn. Another suitable husband. And I do think we'll accept this guy. Bright, magnetic, and vigorous. He's a tedious speaker, though, but that's not too bad. And he has gone into Ambrakia. He's got a bit of management already. We did lose our guy in Pella. So I think he is the option for Pella. So we'll send him forward. Looks like the Pionians decided to be Pussios. So that's kind of good for us. They've also ended their sieges here. Fine. So let's try and man this place with six of the Acontistae. And let's replace those archers with 33 Acontistae too. That should be good enough. Let's have a look. Yeah, can we go to very high? Not quite, but that's absolutely fine. This army, though, is absolutely battered. So I think we go back for, to Larissa, and we probably want to get all of those troops too. So let's... Hmm. This is the question now. Who do we leave behind here? Oh, the Acontistai. So let's leave that Acontistai behind. Let's just pop out there. Can we get through this way? We can. Good. So I think with Alexander, we 100% want to go after these cities. I'm thinking we take these two rather than this one, just because I'm worried about those Pionians coming back and attacking us there. I don't think they'll come and attack us here. So that's quite good. Uh, but glorious... Antigonids and Greeks have broken their alliance to become allies with Megalopolis. The GCS just backstabbing bastards. That's what they are. No, they're, no sorry. They're lovely people. They're lovely people. But let's uh, let's ally with them then now. <laughs> like, come on. Come on. Surely you want it now. Surely. We see no benefit to us. <sighs> Man. No one. This guy has zero god damn influence now I, I honestly think it might be worth just getting rid of him and getting a new diplomat not that it really matters like <laughs> it's not doing anything for us having a diplomat is it let's be honest so yeah another spy in there let's also have a look at where our spies are and just maybe move them if we want to move them I think we can maybe come out this way slightly just to see what's going on and Captain Parmenion oh that's quite a big army I think that's just a rebel town. Interesting. Good. Well, let's have a look over here. Bacchus, Lycnidos. Yeah, it's good to having you up here, really. How did you lose sight of that army? God damn it. But anyway, let's... And then the final one, Coerilos. All the way up here. Let's keep on moving, maybe. Yeah, I think where we were before was the best position, because we can see over this way, too. So, yes, good. Well... You need to go back for retraining, don't you, my friend? So let's send you back. I will get another Zista Foroi in here too. Because this army really does lack cavalry. I mean, with the Prodromoy in it, it'll be okay. But it's still not going to be great. So right then, let's come around over here. And let's split our army. So this one is a much bigger garrison than this one. So let's get Alexander over here to siege it down. Two turns, really, just with Alexander. That's pretty darn good. Let's get four of those boys, one of the Thurio four, right? I mean, we can pretty much just split the army, can't we, in half? So, and maybe one more Ambrachio. And then these guys can come over this way, just get the Rams too. Fantastic. Well, that should be a nice couple of sieges that we can finally get some extra land off them. Because it's been a while, hasn't it? We've just been dealing with so much stuff. And now Baroya has the mines in there too. Fantastic. Can we get Baroya up to normal? We can, but it doesn't grow. So I'm going to prioritize the growth there. Because I think this area could be very rich. Especially with the mines and the trade. And the trade with Pella. I think this area could be exceedingly rich if we get it to the next level. So let's do that. Where we get, you know, proper trade buildings. Proper trade buildings. So where is this? Dion's a little bit upset. So we're going to have to put it down slightly. Now we can build. Now we can finally build. And I think let's build 
Now, no, we need the upgrades, don't we? So Fenike's upgrading, and one more place we can build the upgrade. Let's have a look. Where is it? Well, Oricon, so let's build it there. And, yeah, oh, my God, two more cities. Farsalos and Ferai can both upgrade too. So we do need to save up for that as well. Nice. Well, uh, where did this army? Yeah, it's still there. That's good. I think we're all good on this turn. Looks like the Aetolians might be deciding to attack us, so that'll be fun if that happens. <laughs> Man, this campaign, 0 to 100 very quickly, and it stayed at 100 for a long time. So, I mean, it's been very fun, though, hasn't it? It's been pretty challenging. It's all good, man. It's all good. Who are you? Byzantium. Surely you want an alliance. Very demanding. Yeah, classic. Obviously, clearly very demanding, you know? Clearly, clearly. Another candidate for adoption. We're going to decline this one so we get more kids. Itolian League, of course, are transgressing against us, but we should be able to get to back to Ambrakia in time, and that should ward off any filthy attacks from those boys. So let's uh, let's combine a few of these to try and get... Oh, is that going to be enough? Just enough. Just so we don't need to retrain quite so many of these boys. Um... How many do we still need to retrain? I mean, obviously, those guys can get together. And, yeah, we still probably not quite there. So let's maybe get you into there, just about. And this one can maybe go into the 33. And that should make retraining a lot easier. So let's make sure we retrain all the guys that need it first before we retrain them for armor upgrades. So, yeah, that's just about it. That's that's just about retraining that army. Good. Fantastic. So, the Antigonids and Athens are now at war. I wonder where Athens has attacked them. But they do have these armies. So, it would be nice if that army went and attacked the Antigonids somewhere. <laughs> uh, Bakiria got the Governor's Villa. I think that's just repairing, right? Or maybe, no, maybe it actually did upgrade. Fantastic. So, we used all of our money to retrain that army. And hopefully deal with the Aetolians if they decide to attack us, because that would be quite annoying. Greeks, let's have another go. We're going to try every time. Still demanding. No matter what I do, demanding. We're just going to have to give them loads of money, I think, would be the, the option. But where did this second full stack come from? Where did you get this army, guys? <laughs> Looks like they've trained. They got a lot of mercenaries, though. Like, the Trollian infantry, though, is an absolute beast. 22 morale. I don't want to fight that. <laughs> Not at this point. Could... Yeah, this army can't even get through because of Athens. Oh, go on then. Athens, you're at least doing something good for us. So let's go for this battle. Auto resolve 60. That's not a bad amount of losses at all. Let's also enslave this one. Because it's only a large town. I don't really mind enslaving those boys. Let's... Uh, that should also help with growth in a few of our other places like Pella. So, yes, going back to the enslavements. Let's bring this rest of the army across. Means that we are... Oh, I didn't mean to leave Athamanians. I meant to leave the uh, the archers, but that's fine for now. Now, this guy is coming up here. So that... Sh oh, he actually made it worse in Pella. No one likes you, eh? We're going to have to keep those guys in there now, then. So I'm thinking Prodromoi. I mean, this army come down here. Let's get these guys. Uh, we can't get these guys retrained. Now I'm wondering, uh, maybe I should have taken that guy. But we've got this Akontistai, so let's bring them up. It's going to take them a little while to get there. Anyone else double stacked with troops? Doesn't seem like it right now. But that's fine. I mean, we're on the cusp of having three armies now, which would be very good. So I'd be pretty happy with that if we do get to three armies. We just need some more garrison troops. I mean, we have garrison troops. They're just all in this army here. So I'm wondering if this Akontistai and this Archer would be good. They definitely would be good garrison troops. So we might as well send them up there. Let's now do this battle. Oh, is that the Thalian Cavalry? It is. Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> They got Chalka Speeders too. 
So, yeah, I mean, but we've got good phalangites now, so should be at least as a match. Well, on very hard, they're not a match to the Chalcospedes, but they're still going to do a lot better than the Deuteroy. We'll probably actually use the Deuteroy, though, seeing as they are already damaged. But let's, uh, let's get into the battle, guys, and let's take the next city. So the gates and wall are down, and they have come out to parte, which is good for us. The Thessalian cavalry and the Prodromoi shouldn't be too much of a worry inside the walls of the city. I would love you guys to fire your javis. And when these guys have moved past, let's get us going as well. Come on, guys. Fire your javis. Fire them away. Nice. Good. Push them away. We're going to get this guy in here. Then we're going to get this guy over this way too. Just to make a breach. Make a beachhead in there. You guys come out. Don't need you anymore. We can send you back towards the Zistaphoroi. Just so, because you're in the way. Right, now fire your javis. These guys get there. Right, let's use the Deuteroy to the best of our abilities. Let's get you over this way. And let's get some of them in here too. Are you going to fire your javis, guys? That's better. Good. That's what we like to see. Now get in the fight. Charge. Now we're getting the Phalangites in there. We're going to get our general forward too. So he can affect them as well. And... Oh, they got another javelin round off. Come on, guys. <laughs> brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Constantly brutal, this campaign, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all happy. Everyone's happy. I am happy. I, I am happy. I'm just... You know, it's just tough. It's tough. It's a brutal campaign. Here they come, though. You guys get your phalanx down. They want to charge a phalanx mixed with a Thurio 4, right? That's absolutely fine by me. No problems there whatsoever. Get there, guys. Get there. And then I think... We're not going to go all the way around that way. We'll probably just go through this way and just see what we can do in terms of getting rid of the boys. In fact, it might be worth trying to get our archers in now. Just so... Yeah, this should absolutely shred them. Right, guys. Now attack them. That should be good. Go on, boys. Right, we'll get them rid of the gates. Uh, get them away from the gates, should I say. And then let's see how we can bait this Thetalian cavalry. There we go. We've got them off the gates. Uh, so now it's time to try and bait some of their cavalry. So let's get our phalangites there. Let's also double stack them in here too. So you guys come this way. And then we'll use you guys. I don't... I still don't think it's worth going all the way around that way. We may actually send one or two units. But that's fine. Let's get those guys in there. Guys, are you going to move? Oh, we're on a we're on a slow-mo. <laughs> that's why. And then we're going to get our missile men in the back here. So they can maybe fire and get rid of some of this cavalry. That'd be great. Here come the cavalry, by the way, guys. Here come the cavalry. Let's get the phalanx down. We should absolutely shred the prodromoi with our phalanx. So this should be nice and easy. Very good. Very good. There we go. And the rest of the uh, phalangites are all getting past. Good. That's what we like to see. So let's move slightly forward if we can. I would ideally prefer them to be in a good position. A good formation rather than worry about anything else. So, guys, can you organize yourselves a little bit, please? There we go. That's better. That's better. Now the archers are firing at the, the Thessalian cavalry. That is great for us because that might force them to come and attack. So the Ambrachiotes, let's try and get them slightly forward as well. So it's a double line. Always good to have a double line. Absolutely destroys them normally. Here comes both of their units, Prodromoi and Thessalians, to try and charge us. So let's also try and get these units around this way. I'm going to use the Prodromoi, sorry, the, the Deuteroi here. Let's also group all of these guys so I know who they are. We've also got a Thurio Foroi here too. Let's get you. And you guys can get there. Try and double line it too. Same with you. Triple line even. And then we'll get the archers in the back there too. So how are we doing over this way? You shall not pass, my friends. You shall not pass. Get the phalanx down. Absolutely shred them. I know the, Th the Thessalians are pretty good. 
But overall, we're doing good. So get around this way. There we go. That'd be good. Uh, we've got another Thurio 4 right over here. How are we getting shot? I guess by the Progemite. But the, Th the Thessalians are so tough. They can just stick a Phalanx and still be fine. Absolutely brutal, man. Absolutely brutal. But uh, yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep going and try to squeeze them in there. Here come the Progemite. While we... Oh, there they go. They're just running. <laughs> Glorious. Good thing for us. So let's get up here. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Come on, men. You're taking a long time, my friends. Keep coming. Keep coming. Who is going out there? Yeah, we've got this guy here to just block them off. And then we are just going to block off the back here. And hopefully destroy these guys. We may need to get this unit into the... Uh, the formation as well, because these guys are taking a bit of damage, mainly because of those Chalka Speeders. So you guys get in formation now. And ideally, I want to lead the way with the Ambrachiotes, because they are going to do a lot more damage than the Deuteroy. So Deuteroy, though, you can come round. That's no problem. We'll get the Archers in here too, and the Thurio Thuriophoroi. So keep going. Keep going, my friends. You guys, I want you to just march in here and just kill them all. There we go. Right, guys. Right, guys. Get in formation. Get in formation. Same with you. Both of you guys, I want you to attack them. Should be able to just march on in a good formation and just keep it together and just absolutely shred them. There we go. They don't like that, do they? They don't like that. Look how tough those Thalian cavalry are. They're insanely tough. They have just managed to just push through two very good Phalangites. <laughs> Pretty darn easily as well. <laughs> That's insane. That is genuinely insane. We're going to get our general round this way. What is this? What is this? Come on, guys. <laughs> why Why do you... I, I had you in a big line. Why do you change formation? <laughs> You're on guard mode as well. Like, I don't know why they've changed formation. But they love to, apparently. Here we go. Keep it coming, guys. We should absolutely shred these boys now. These guys should be nicely in the fight. Everyone in here. Everyone in here. Just halt. Just so you get your phalangites down. There we go. That's better. There goes the general. Kill him. He should not be able to get through this. Surely. Surely. Surely he can't get through there. But anyway, good victory for us if we do pull this off, which we will. But yeah, kill them all. Terrible, terrible formation for you, but get your phalanx down. There we go, boys. Good. Great formation. Great formation. I love it. Fantastic. Yes. There we go. Ah, oh, glorious. Glorious. We've absolutely shredded these Chalka Speeders now. You guys get in the fight there. There we go. They're broken. Fantastic. We've killed them all. Now we just need to kill the guys on the town square. Not many left. So should be pretty easy. Let's speed it up nice and quick. Well, I've got to say, with the Salian Cavalry and their Chalka Speeders, I think this is a decent victory on very hard on a siege battle. So a good victory. Some of them, you know, took some serious losses, but <laughs> overall, a decent victory. I will see you back on that campaign map, guys. So Cassandre is a minor city. So for this one, I think, I think it's a minor city. Let's have a look. Let's occupy. The problem is I don't want to occupy and then have to upgrade it because that's going to... Yes, good, good, good. That's very good. Because if I had to occupy and upgrade it, we don't have the money for that right now. I'm happy with the Temple of Dionysus, though. I'm assuming... Actually, there's no corruption here at the minute. That's pretty darn good. So, yes, a glorious victory. Now, they've got this large town, this minor city, obviously Thessalonica. Um... I am worried about this large army, although it looks like the Athens is doing a good job of cooking them for us. So for now, let's keep on going. We're going to take this 10, guys. I know it's a bit of a waste. We could leave them in the city. I mean, but the Deuteroy, uh, you know what? How much is that? 31. Oh, my God. That's such a good garrison troop. We can't stick our nose up at it at all. We've got 3,900 gold now as well. So what I'm going to do, I am going to siege down this city just with these guys, Thessalonica. And then we come and join. And then we can actually siege it down. 
So, you know, if I'd have done that with the army, they probably would have run out of movement points and not actually managed to siege it down. Let's also order these guys. I don't know why they were so disordered before, but fine. This army now, they are retraining. Good. Are they retraining? No. Let's use our money then to retrain everyone here. Good. Good, good, good. And the Aetolians, I don't know what you're doing, but I don't like it. <laughs> So let's go one more turn, guys. Apparently, he's making 19,000 now with these cities. They must be really rich. That one's not so much, but Cassandre is. Hmm. Lots of trading, and it's trading salt with Dion and loads of sea trade. Wow. 478 with Dion, 557 with Pella via the sea. Do you have... Yeah, you've got the second level of shipwright. That is glorious. A glorious amount of sea trade. This one as well. Now, let's destroy that too. Uh, we're not retraining, repairing. Repair the walls first, and then we'll repair the city thing next time. But good. Very good. In fact, we can go up to normal there and normal there. Glorious. And Thessalonica should hopefully be ours next turn. And then we do also need to take Tyrone as well. And then we can slowly move east because... Once we're here, I believe they've got this settlement here. But taking these, then we'll be bordering a whole new kettle of fish. We'll be bordering the Seleucids. And hopefully the Seleucids have other things to worry about. <coughs> Ptolemies. Um, but no, they don't want to attack the Ptolemies, lol. <laughs> I don't know why, but fine. Uh, and then this army can just react to whatever happens. And we'll just kind of ignore Pionia until they come and siege us down. And we'll scare them off. Then we'll go back and, back and forth, basically. So, glorious episode. Lovely episode. A lot of love. A lot of happiness. No salt in this one. <laughs> but if you did enjoy, guys, a like would be highly, highly appreciated. It really does help the channel out. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe as well. But thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. And I will see you all again on the next video.